Okay, now we understand how to use Gaussian animation to obtain LU factorization for matrix and also for to solve Lilian system. We know Gaussian animation is a very good, uh, powerful uh, algorithm, efficient algorithm, right? Now let's consider the condition for Gaussian animation. That means if we are given any arbitrary arbitrary uh, matrix, can we always use Gaussian animation? Okay, so this is a condition, feasible condition for Gaussian animation. Okay, let's recall just uh, consider step K, the general case, right? Now you see, actually, if we okay consider from the beginning, that's better for you, I think. Now you see, for step one, for step one here, we have a very important number, the ratio or the multiplier. It's okay. Now you see the multiplier is a ratio, so it has a denominator. In order to obtain the ratio, then we need the denominator A11 is not zero. It's okay for you? So if zero is A11 is zero, then we cannot, we cannot use zero to animate these numbers. It's okay? Because ratio, we cannot use zero denominator. Okay, so first thing, we need A11 is not zero. It's okay for you? Okay, then let's come to step two. For step two, also here, the multiplier is uh, this ratio. Okay, also has denominator. This denominator is A to two, this number. But now you see, the subscript one means this number is obtained by step one. Okay, so that means this number is different to A, A to two, the original a to two. It's okay for you? A one to two is not, is not the original A zero to two. It's okay for you? That means we cannot know A two to one from the original matrix directly. We have to use Gaussian elimination. Then we know what is A two to one. It's okay for you? Okay, I show you by the example again. Now you see, for the original, original matrix, the first element is two. So here you see, denominator, denominator, denominator. If this number is zero, okay, we cannot do anything, right? It's okay for you? And now, here, now you see by step one, we obtain this number is, is one. So this one is new element. The original element is three for the coefficient of x2 in the second uh, row. It's okay. But uh, now we don't know one in the original matrix. We have to obtain one by step one. It's okay for you? And continue. Continue. Here, we use one. So that is why here we have denominator one. Okay? And for step by, okay, by step one, here, we obtain another new number two. It's okay? So this two is obtained by step two, but uh, here is five, right? Change five to two. Okay, so the the problem is the problem is we need some denominators, right? But these denominators are not are not in the original matrix, and we need to consider how to obtain non-zero 
diagonal elements because they are denominators. Are you clear? Okay, so for the general case, now you see step K. For step K here, also we need to consider the denominator AKK by step K minus 1. But we don't know this number in the original matrix. We have to use okay, Gaussian elimination K minus 1 steps, then we can obtain this number. It's okay for you? Okay, so now let's consider how to obtain this number. Then here, now we know we have a very important number, the diagonal element AKK K minus 1 by step K minus 1. We need this number is not 0. It's okay? So we call this number by pivot, pivot because it is very important, right? So we call it by pivot. Okay, and uh, how to obtain the pivot? Then, okay, now we need some uh, theoretical analysis. Now we need to uh, recall the mathematical conception. The case ordered principle minor of A. Do you remember the conception? What is the case ordered principle minor of A? Okay, actually that is the determinant of the case leading principle sub matrix of A. It means, now you see, for matrix A, M by M matrix, I write here, M by M matrix. So first row is A11, A12, to A, to A1N. Second row, A22, A21, A22. Okay, I write here. A13, then here is A23 to show you more clear. A2N, right? And A31, A32, A33, to A3N. It's okay? Last row, AN1, AN2, AN3, to ANN. That's okay? So, here, the case leading principle sub matrix of A, that means the first the first leading principle sub matrix of A, just A11, just one number, right? And if we consider two by two matrix, sub matrix, then A11, A12, A21, A22, the determinant we denoted by D2. So, D1, I write here, D1 is just the determinant of a11. So it's just A11, right? For just one by one matrix, means just a number. Deter the determinant of a number, just itself, right? It's okay for you? So D1 is just A11. And uh, what is D2? D2 is the determinant of the two by two sub matrix, principal sub matrix. So it is A11, a12, A21, A22. It's okay? Denoted by D2. And also D3. D3 is a sub matrix. So A11, A12, A13, A21, A22, A23. A11, A32, A33. I help you to recall the conception. Okay, the principle, the case order, the principle minor. So now you see the number D1, D2, D3, they are the case order, the principle minus of A. First, second, third, and so on. So DK, DK is the determinant of the sub matrix MK by K, K by K. Here is K by K sub matrix A11. That means you just choose, choose, choose the k by k sub matrix, and the compute its determinant. So k from one to n. For last, last one, dn, 
Actually, it's just the determinant of matrix A because n by n, n by n matrix just A itself. It's okay for you? So this is, uh, this are the case ordered principle minus of A. Okay, so now let's show you the relation between these numbers D1, D2, D3, and Dn. The relations between this number and the pivots a k k k minus one. Okay, now you should firstly to understand the condition for Gaussian elimination. We need in each step, in each step, we need the pivot is not zero. It's okay. Okay, let's consider the relation. Okay, for the step k in Gaussian elimination. Okay, now we need to consider the pivot a k k by step k y minus one. This number is not zero, right? Okay, actually, now if we consider because L we we need the final factorization is a equal to L multiply u, right? In step k, actually we already some matrix like this. So for the for this matrix u actually in step k we already obtain zeros below the diagonals remember so here we use the, the block the four blocks u1 u2 here just a zero u3 o okay for you let's show you what is mean now you see in this step k in this step k now we use four blocks now you see this block is already zero right so this block is denoted by u1 this block denoted by u2 right and the last this block it's okay for you now you see here you should focus here already zero already zero Okay, so let's come back here. That means here already zero. Other blocks u1, u2, u3. And also by the same blocks here, also for L, we are also obtain. And what is L here? Okay, again, let's come back to see here. Uh, if in classroom, it's, it's easy to show uh, in the same time uh, the PPT and the uh, blackboard. But here, I, I, I have to switch the screen. Okay, now you see, for the step K, also, now you see, we, for L, because here, actually we need to consider the Product, the product L k multiply L two L two two multiply L one. Actually, what is means the product? If you remember, that means we just put the numbers together, right? So these numbers we have multipliers. But you should focus here. This part, this block, is is zero block, right? It's okay for you. And actually. This block is identity matrix. Now you see just one, 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 zeros, zeros. And for this block, uh, also a lower triangular matrix with one sound diagonal. And this is general uh, block. Okay, so four blocks for this product L and four blocks for this matrix, right? Okay, so let's come back. Here, now you see, we have four blocks. You should focus here, zero, zero. Okay, and also you should know, now let's com compute, let's compute the product between the two blocks, block matrix, right? So that means first row multiplied this first column. So that is L1 star denoted this part by L1 star multiply U1 plus zero multiply zero. So we obtain L1 star U1. It's okay? 
Okay, and first row multiply this column. Okay, we just use star to represent the result. We don't care. I don't care. And for the this this block, second row multiply first column. So also this some elements we don't care the specific numbers. We so we know this is some elements, right? Also this. But now we only consider this this block. Why? Because it means the ordered ordered principal mind of A. It's okay for you, now you see? We just choose not that means decay. Okay? So we only consider this block because the determinant of L1 star multiply U is just decay. It's just the decay. The case order order the principle minor. Are you clear? Okay, there's some knowledge for linear algebra for matrix, right? Okay, now we know dk equal to the determinant of L1 star multiply u1. And if you you should remember the property of a determinant, the determinant of the product of A and B should equal to determinant of A multiply the determinant of B. Are you clear? Remember this formula, right? So, okay, here, the determinant of L1 star multiply the determinant of U1. Okay, now, what is L1 star? Let's check it again. Here, we just show you. Okay, this part, this block, right? Remember the product, this block is denoted by L1 star. Now you see, I just said this is also a lower triangular matrix with ones on its diagonal. Okay, for this matrix, what's, what is the determinant? Is the determinant is the product of the elements on the diagonal. Remember? Okay, so the determinant is just one, right? It's okay? So now let's come back. Here, where we know the determinant of L1 star is just one, just one. So one multiplied determinant of U1 is just the determinant of U1. Are you clear? Remember, for lower, for general, I write here, for general lower matrix, the determinant is just the product of this element on the diagonal. It's okay for you? You should remember this, this important and basic uh, property for determinant for triangular matrix, right? Now here, because they are just one, once, so the determinant is one for L1 star. Okay, so now you see, that means dk equal to the determinant of u1. Okay, we obtain this relation. And what is the determinant of u1? Okay, let's come back. Because u1 here, again, here, now you see, u1 is this, also now you see, an upper triangular sub matrix. It's okay? Okay, and for upper triangular matrix, how to obtain its determinant? Its determinant is just the product of the elements, right? So that is A110. Okay, this one should be A221 and to AKKK minus 1. Okay, this is just the product of the pivots. Okay, so this is very good result, right? Okay, so that means here, the determinant of U1 is just the product of A110, A221 to AKK, K-1, just the product of the pivots. Now you see, the pivots, the first pivot is A011, the second is A122, and next is A233 to 
a k minus one k k. It's okay. The product is just the determinant of u one. Now we know it's just the decay. So this is the relation between decay and the pivots. Okay, and also we know if we leave a k k here, then the product of the former numbers. Now you see that is decay minus one. It's okay for you. Okay, so if we denote or net d zero b one, d zero b one, then we can obtain the pivot a k k by step k minus one is also the ratio between decay and decay minus one. So you should understand what are the decay. They are the pivots here. It's okay. D one is the determinant of a one one. Right? And D2 is a determinant of this 2 by 2 submatrix. D3, oh, determinant. Sorry, here, I, um, I forget. Right, determinant. Okay. DK, determinant. DN, determinant. It's okay for you? Okay. So that means the pivot AKK equal to the ratio. DK divided by DK minus 1. And K from 1 to M minus 1. So we only need the let d0 be 1, then we can obtain the formula. It's okay? Okay, so we need to use, for this part, we need to use some knowledge for matrix and linear algebra determinant and a case ordered minus. Okay, so I hope you can understand. Okay, so now, Let's can obtain a theoretical result. The existence and the uniqueness of LU factorization. Okay, existence means can we use Gaussian elimination for any uh, matrix, right? And can we obtain unique LU factorization? Okay, so this is the result. Now, let dk, k from 1 to n, be the ordered principle minus of A of order N. Okay, so you should know D1, D2, D3, and so on, right? If for each DK is not zero, K from 1 to N, okay, so this is a condition, right? If DK is not zero for K from 1 to N, then there exists a lower triangular a lower triangular matrix L with ones on the diagonal and uh, an upper triangular matrix U such that A equal to L multiply U and L and U are unique so existence means if the condition is satisfied then we can obtain LU factorization that means we can use Gaussian elimination and also we can obtain unique results L and U are you clear the meaning of this theorem is okay existence and uniqueness okay actually for the existence we just check by here because the pivot we need firstly we need the condition for Gaussian elimination for each step we need the pivot is not zero right it's okay for you and now we also obtain the pivot equal to the ratio so in order to non-zero pivot then we need the nominate numerator and the denominator they are not zeros for each decay right so for each decay, if they are not zero, each not zero, then pivots are not zeros. Then we can obtain LU factorization. And also they are unique. Why they are unique? Now let's prove the uniqueness. Okay. So that means if we suppose we can obtain different LU factorization, that means A equal to a equal to 
L1 multiply U1 and also different L2 multiply U2. We obtain different LU factorization, right? L1 is a lower triangular matrix with ones on the diagonal, and U1 is an upper triangular matrix. And uh, we obtain another L2, also lower triangular matrix ones with ones on the diagonal, and also another upper triangular matrix. Now we need we need a proof. We need a proof. They are unique. That means we need a proof. Actually, L1 is just L2, and U1 is just U2. That means uniqueness, right? Okay, how to prove it? Actually, because we already know L1 and L2, they are inversible, right? So, we multiply both sides by L, for example, by multiply L2 inverse. Okay, let's see. We multiply L2 inverse multiply L1 multiply U1 equal to L2 inverse multiply L2 multiply U2. Then here you see L2 inverse multiply L2. Then this is just identity matrix. So disappear. It's okay. It's okay. And also U1 and U2. Okay. They are also inversible. So we can multiply U1 inverse for both sides. For both sides U1 inverse. Now you see that this product U1 multiply U1 inverse also disappear because it is identity matrix, right? Okay, now we obtain. Now you see left side is L2 inverse multiply L1 here. Right side is just U2 multiply U1 inverse. It's okay for you? It's okay? Okay, now let's consider L1 and L2. They are two lower triangular matrix with ones on the diagonal. And also for L2, if you remember, the inverse of a lower triangular matrix is also a lower triangular matrix and with ones on the diagonals. It's okay for you, remember? We talked about it, it before. Okay, so that means now you see, for the left side, both the two matrices, L1 and L2 inverse, they are lower triangular matrices with ones on the diagonal. So, the product, the product is also a lower triangular with ones on the diagonal. Okay, so the product, okay, actually, let's consider here. Okay, here, remember? Now you see, you see L1 and L1 inverse also lower lower triangular matrix with ones on the diagonal, ones on the diagonal. And the product, if we, you should remember, right? The product, now you see, also a same structure, lower triangular matrix with ones on the diagonal. Clear? And also this property is also satisfied for upper triangular matrix. It's okay? So for upper triangular matrix, it's inverse is also a, an upper triangular matrix. The structure is also upper triangular matrix. And for upper triangular matrix multiply upper triangular matrix, the result is also an upper triangular matrix. It's okay? The structure is K. Okay? So, here, let's come back. Okay, so that means for the left side, the product is a lower triangular matrix with ones on the diagonal. And also for the right side, we just said it is an upper triangular matrix multiply another upper triangular matrix. Okay, so the result is also an upper triangular matrix. Okay, what, what we, we obtain? Now you see, this, these two matrices are equal. 
but left side is lower triangular matrix. Right side is an upper triangular matrix. They are equal. What is mean? And also here, the elements on the diagonal are ones. Okay, so there is only one case. That means for both sides, they are just identity matrix, just, just a diagonal matrix. It's okay for you? Clear? Because left side is lower triangular matrix with ones on the diagonal. For the right side, the product is an upper triangular matrices. Matrix, right? They are equal. A, a lower triangular matrix equal to upper triangular matrix. What does it mean? It means actually it's diagonal matrix, right? So actually both the two matrices are diagonal matrix and also here once on the diagonal. So actually just identity matrix. So we know for both sides, actually just identity matrices. Okay, so L2 inverse multiplied L1 equal to identity matrix. So that means, okay, that means L2 just equal to L1, right? So we obtain L2 equal to L1. Of course, similar case, because U2 multiply U1 inverse equal to identity matrix. So that means U2 just be U1. Are you clear? If the product between the two matrices are identity matrix, right? You can move. Okay, now I show you details. L2 inverse multiply L1 equal to identity matrix. Then we multiply from left side by L2. Then here we multiply L2, right? L2 multiply L2 inverse disappear. L2 multiply I is just L2. So L1 equal to L2. See? And also U2 equal to U1. Clear? Okay, now we obtain the uniqueness. It's okay for you? Okay, so the condition is the principal minus, order the principal minus are not zeros. Right? It's okay for you? Actually, actually, the basic condition, the basic condition is the pivot is not zero. Are you clear? So this is basically because we don't know uh, the pivots before. We have to obtain pivots after step case Gaussian elimination. So we need to transform the condition to another one. So now we know we can use the order the principal minus. Okay, to obtain the condition. Okay, and also you should know this is just a sufficient condition. Okay, this is just a sufficient condition. Okay, let's finally to show you example. Okay. So I show you three matrices to you, and uh, uh, we can discuss which matrix has an LU factorization and uh, unique. Now, A is uh, this three by three matrix, right? One, two, three, two, four, one, and four, six, seven. Now, let's use directly the Gaussian elimination. So we need uh, L1. Right? What is L1? 1, 1, 1 on the anim uh, diagonal elements. And uh, this number, how to obtain this number? Minus 2, this number should be minus actually 2 over 1. It's okay? The pivot is 1 for the first uh, column, right? And the minus 4 is just uh, minus 4 over 1. So this is minus 4 over 1. It's okay? The two pivots, uh, multipliers. Then we use this L1 matrix multiply from left side. Then we can obtain this matrix. Let's check, right? Let's check. Actually, we need to use here. Uh, 1 minus 2 minus 4. 1, 1. 
Okay, so we use the first row one zero zero to multiply each column. Then we obtain one two three. It's okay. Okay, uh, now I sh uh, I hope you can uh, compute easily and quickly. It's okay. One zero zero multiply each column. Just obtain the first row one two three. Right? Okay, let's check the second row. Minus two one zero multiply each column. Okay, so minus one multiply one plus one multiply two. So it is zero, right? It is zero. Okay, check second column. Minus two multiply two, it is minus four plus one multiply four plus zero multiply six, right? So we obtain zero again. It's okay? And check for the third column. Minus 2 multiply 3. It is minus 6. Plus 1 multiply 1. Plus 0 multiply 7. So it is minus 5. It's okay? Okay, let's check the last row. So we use the last row. Minus 4, 0, 1. To multiply each column one by one. Okay, first column means minus 4 multiply 1 plus 0 multiply 2 plus 1 multiply 4. So it is 0, right? Check. Okay, second column. Minus 4 multiply 2, it is minus 8. Plus 0 multiply 4. And plus 1 multiply 6. So it is minus 2. It's okay? Check. Okay, last. Minus 4 multiply 3, it is minus 12. Plus 0 multiply 1. And plus 1 multiply 7. So it is... Uh, okay, oh sorry, it should be minus 5. It's okay? It should be minus 5, right? Because uh, here, minus 4 multiply 3 is minus 12 plus 7. So it is minus 5. Okay? Okay, now, can you see the problem? Okay, now you see. By this animation, step one, we are, uh, we already, we already obtained the two zeros below the diagonal. Right? Okay, now, let's come to step two. Okay, now you see, we have zero pivot. It's okay, now you see, zero is, pa the pivot is zero. We cannot use zero to animate minus two. So, we have to stop, right? We cannot use Gaussian animation. We cannot continue. It's okay for you because this number is zero. We cannot use zero as a denominator. Okay, so we have stop. But now, you see, this matrix is not upper triangular matrix. So, in this case, for this matrix A, the Gaussian elimination cannot be performed without row interchanges. Maybe someone said, oh, we can interchange the two rows. This is another method we will talk about later. But now, we cannot interchange the two rows. It's okay? So we have to stop. We cannot continue the Gaussian elimination. It's okay? Because we we have zero pivot. Okay, now let's check. Let's check the suff uh, sufficient condition by the principle of minus. In fact, we have three ordered principle minus of A. Let's check, okay? The first one is just a one by one matrix, just one. It's okay? So the first uh, minus is just one. Okay, second one. Second one means we consider the determinant of the two by two submatrix, right? So the determinant is one multiply four minus two multiply two. It's okay? So four minus four is zero. Now you see, we obtain zero minor, zero minor. Of course, we can check the third, the third Minor. The third minor is just the determinant of A. Okay, let's practice the determinant of A. 
determinant of a. Let's uh, please follow me. That is uh, one multiply four multiply seven. It's okay. Plus two. This number multiply one. Multiply here. This number, right? It's okay for you. This this number and plus. This number with these two numbers, right? So 3 multiply 2 multiply 6. It's okay for you? Okay. Then change the direction minus these three numbers, right? So 3 multiply 4 multiply 4. And minus this 2 with 7, right? It's okay? 2 multiply 2 multiply 7. And the last one. This number multiplies the two numbers, right? So 1 multiply 1 multiply 6. Are you clear? Now you see, for the third determinant, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We have 6 terms. Okay, now you see, so for determ for computer determinant, it uh, need a cost, right? Okay, now let's find the final result. Okay, this is uh, 28, right? 4 multiply 7, 28. Plus 8, right? Plus 8. And plus here, this term. 3 multiply 2 is 6. 6 multiply 6 is 6, 16, uh, 36, right? Okay, minus, minus here. Okay, 3 multiply uh, 4 is 12. 12 multiply 4 is 48, right? Okay, this term 4 multiply 7. 4 multiply 7, so 28. It's okay? And at last, minus 6. Right, it's okay? So, 28, 28. Okay? And now you see, uh, here, it's equal to 44, right? The, uh, the sub, uh, submission. 44 minus, minus here. 48 plus 6. So it is 54, right? Okay, so we obtain minus 10. It's okay? Uh, I show you the details to compute the determinant. 3 by 3. It's okay? Now you see, in fact, we obtain the order the principal minus of a are 1, 0, and minus 10. Now we obtain 0 minus, minus. So, actually here, the condition need decay is 0, is not 0. Okay, so that is why we cannot use a Gaussian elimination, because here, we obtain 0, 0 pivot. Are you clear? In this case, the Gaussian elimination cannot be performed. We cannot obtain LU factorization. Okay, so A cannot equal to L multiply U. In this case, clear? Okay, I should, let's consider another matrix B. Okay, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 1, 3, 3, 1. It's okay? And uh, now, I, I, I cannot uh, I show all the uh, details to you. So I ask you to practice by yourself. For this B, okay, firstly, we use L1 inverse like this. Minus 2 and minus 3, uh, similar. Uh, two multipliers, right? It's okay. Then, okay, in this case, now you see, we can obtain 1, 0, 0. And also because you see, you see, 2 and 2, 3 and 3. Actually, they are same two columns. So we can obtain same columns here. Also one zero zero, and change the third column to here one minus one and minus two. It's okay for you. So I ask you to practice by yourself to obtain. That means you use you use L one inverse this matrix. You you need to check one minus two minus three one and one you use this matrix multiply b from left side then you can obtain this matrix denoted by u1 it's okay now 
we also obtain zero here. However, it is different from the case of A. For A here is zero, but this number is not zero, right? This is for A. Now, for B, both the two elements are zeros. Actually, now you see, we already obtain an upper triangular matrix, U1. It's okay? So, now means we obtain B equal to L1 multiply U1. We already obtain LU factor ratio. Even here, zero, but here also zero. So, we already obtain upper triangular matrix. Okay? Of course, we can continue. We can continue. We can use, okay, another matrix L2 by 1, 1, 1 here, minus 2. To multiply this matrix, then we can obtain this number is 0. Actually, we just check. Now you see, you use this, this row, multiply the third column. So, here, 0. 0 multiply 1 plus minus 2 multiply minus 1, it is 2, right? 2 uh, plus 1 multiply minus 2, so it is 0, right? Now you see, this number is 0. Also, this is a upper triangular matrix denoted by U2. See, that means we can continue, we can continue, that means uh, L1 multiply B, uh, uh, here, we use L1 inverse because we denote this matrix by L1 inverse and denote this matrix by L2 inverse. So here, L2 inverse multiply B equal to U2. So that means we can obtain the B equal to, so L1 multiply L2 multiply U2, right? It's okay. If we use product here, then that means B has another LU factor ratio. Here is a one factor ratio, L1 multiply U1, and here L1, L2 in product multiply U2. Now you see, U1 is different from U2. So that means B, this matrix, has two factor ratios, right? Has two. Has two factor ratios. L1 multiply U1 and also L1, L2 multiply U2. Okay, they are not unique. They are not unique. It's okay for you? Okay, now let's check. Let's check here. We well, are obtain two factor ratios. In fact, if we check the ordered principle minus of B, then we can obtain firstly it is 1, right? So first minor is just 1. The second, now let's check the determinant. 1, 1 and 2, 2. Now 1 multiply 2 minus 1 multiply 2. So 0, right? 0. And also for the 3 by 3 minor, the third minor. It's okay for you? Actually, okay, I ask you, I ask you to Compute the determinant of B by yourself. Okay, just like here, by matrix A, six terms. Also, I ask you to practice by yourself. At last, you will obtain zero. You will obtain zero. Actually, we can see here, because here is zero. Because, now you should know, actually it is easy to check. Because by this formula, we know Determinant of B equal to determinant of L1 multiply the determinant of U1. Are you clear? Now, for this matrix, the determinant is just the product of its diagonal elements, right? So, determinant of L1 is just 1. And for determinant of U1, then that is just the product of 1 multiply 0 multiply minus 2. So it is 0. Right? So the de determinant of B is just 0. So you see 1, 0, 0. Okay? For matrix A, 1, 0 and, and not 0. 
minus 10. So that is why for matrix A, we cannot perform Gaussian elimination. But for matrix B, we, yes, we obtain 0 minus, but after the, this 0, the follow, the follows are also zeros. So we can obtain two factor, the LU factor ratio. It is not unique because we just said this condition is just a sufficient condition. It's okay for you. You, you, you should understand what it means, sufficient condition, right? Okay, for the final example, C, 1, 2, 6, 2, 5, 15, 6, 15, and 46. Okay, now I omit the details, practice by yourself. Okay, L1, 1 minus 2 minus 6. You should understand why here is minus 2 and minus 6. Then you use this matrix, multiply C from left side, you will obtain this matrix. Okay, and now you see the pivot is 1. It is not zero, so we can continue to perform the Gaussian elimination. So L2 inverse, then here is minus 3 because it is 3 over 1 minus, right? Okay, then you can obtain U by 1, 2, 6, 0, 1, 3, and 0, 0, 1. I ask you to practice to obtain by, compu by your computation. Okay, I omit the details. Okay, so in this case, now you see, this matrix A has a unique LU factor ratio. C equal to this L. L means the product L1 multiply L2 multiply U, right? It's okay. It's just unique LU factor ratio. In fact, we can also check the order of the principal minus of C. Now the first one is just one. It's okay. The second is the determinant of 2 by 2, so 1 multiply 5 minus 2 multiply 2, so it is also 1, right? Check. And also, I ask you to practice to compute the determinant of C. Okay, actually, actually, you will obtain just 1. Why? Actually, we can use this formula directly, because C equal to L1 multiply L2 multiply U. So the determinant of C equal to the determinant of L1 multiply the determinant of L2 multiply the determinant of U. Right, it's okay. And also I write here, for determinant of L1 here, all the three elements on the diagonal are the ones. So one, right? The determinant of L2 also one. The determinant of u. Now you see the three elements also 1 multiply 1 multiply 1. So 1. Okay, finally the product is 1. See? It's okay for you? So now you see by LU factor ratio, it is very easy to compute the determinant of C. Actually, actually we can come back to matrix A here. In this case, now we have to use six terms, right? Because this is not LU factor ratio. Okay? But if we obtain LU factor ratio for B or for C, we can compute its determinant very easily by computing the product of the determinant L1, determinant L2, and the determinant of U. So you see, we can, we can you use LU factor ratio to com compute the determinant easily. That's okay for you? Okay, so this, I ask you, I hope you can practice by yourself, okay?